I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It all began with a dream. It was over 30 years ago that I dreamed I was leading a group of women from my parish on a retreat. I was driving the lead car of this long caravan when I suddenly was overwhelmed with the need to pull to the side of the road and stop the car. The line of cars behind me were honking, the women were upset, come on, what are you stopping for? We need to go. In the midst of this confusion, I ran over to the curb. It had just finished raining, the sun was out, and the gutters were glistening with fresh rainwater. I remember so distinctly bending down and dipping with both hands into the water and scooping up a handful of golden coins, gleaming in the sunlight as droplets of clear water dropped off of them. I recall that feeling of being elated, having found this precious treasure. Later, I'd reflect on this strange but powerful dream and realize that this treasure was somehow connected to God. In time, it became clear that I would have to let go of things in my life so that I could hold on and accept this unexpected, priceless gift. This dream was a holy invitation, beckoning me to be on a spiritual journey. I realized that I had been on a spiritual quest all of my life, just wasn't aware of it. I was desperately yearning to know God, to understand God's place in the world and mine, as I sought to make sense of this one precious life I had been given. In the time, this dream would be the first of many that will eventually lead to a vocation or ordained ministry. Dreams can be powerful conveyors of the truth, God's truth. John Sanford, priest and counselor, wrote authored a book many years ago called Dreams, God's Forgotten Language. In our secular, postmodern, post-Christian culture, many scoff at the idea that God speaks to us through our dreams, that mysterious realm of our unconscious mind. However, the Bible is replete with examples of God using dreams to make his truth known to priests, prophets, and even unsuspecting carpenters. In today's gospel, God speaks to Joseph through his dreams. God's angel tells him to take Mary and the newborn child Jesus and go to Egypt and then back to Israel to escape the death threats of King Herod and his son. The welfare and safety of Mary and the Christ child weigh heavily on Joseph's shoulders, and he wastes no time making the journey to safety as the angel instructs him. Since the dawn of creation, God has called us to be part of a larger story, God's story, the story we find in the Bible. It is a story of God's love breaking through human history in a most unexpected way, beckoning us to be part of the story of the salvation of the world. A biblical scholar and, I would say, prickly prophet of her own, Verna Dozier, and a former member of my parish, wrote about this in her book, The Dream of God. God's dream is for us to be a new thing in the world, to truly be God's people. As Christians, you and I are called to live our lives not as the world expects us to live them, but to live as Jesus lived, living lives defined by compassion, justice, and mercy. Today, God continues to pursue us in our dreams to be part of God's dream. We also encounter God in a myriad of other ways through other people, music, poetry, worship, scripture, prayer, and daily life. The question is, are we awake? 
Are we listening? Are we paying attention? With the start of a new year, it's a perfect time to reflect on how God is calling you and me in this time in our lives. As I once shared this last summer in a previous sermon, poet Mary Oliver puts it so beautifully. Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? I suggest this as part of our New Year's resolution, you seriously consider this question. I also, I preached a few weeks ago about praying the questions of our lives. And I think Mary Oliver's questions is a pretty good one to try, a good place to start. Listen to God's call. It is in the silences that God speaks to us. In these moments of quiet holiness, we open ourselves to the possibility and the promise of new beginnings. I know change can be difficult. I think we are hardwired to be what I call change adverse because it, become, it can be uncomfortable and unsettling. It is one of the many things I think we've learned from this pandemic, however, that through change, we may uncover parts of ourselves that we have never known before, or maybe we had forgotten or neglected over time. Because change can be a blessing. Change can make us feel fully alive as we rediscover our true identity, our true selves, as children of God. Spiritual journeys, and we're all on one, an opportunity to renew our imaginations, stretch our minds, and break open our hearts to experience God's love on a deeper, more substantive level that nourishes our hungry souls like nothing else can. In the, promise, in the process, we become transformed in ways we cannot imagine. We open ourselves to the power of the Spirit stirring up in our interior lives, maybe like a lively tempest or like a gentle ocean breeze, bringing with it a renewed hunger for God. In the process, we may grace, be graced with the courage to ask, what new thing is God doing in the world? What new thing is God doing here at St. Mike's? At what new thing is God doing in your life? Alan Jones, the former dean at Grace Cathedral and author of The Soul's Journey, writes, There is nothing more difficult than knowing who we are, but there is no greater adventure than trying to find out. And I think that's why we're here. Like Mary and Joseph, we do not embark on this journey alone. God is with us, always. We travel as fellow pilgrims whose lives are closely linked with ours. We hold each other up when we stumble, and we know that there will be a hand to comfort us when discouraged or sorrowful. Together, we form this community of God's people defined by our core values, anchored in the, what we call the Via Media, the Middle Way, our sacred texts, our Anglican tradition, and God's incredible gift of reason and intellect. This is our compass as we navigate as pilgrims in search of a deeper relationship with God. This is our soul's journey to be the children of God in the dream of God. The good news, the very good news, that we are equipped for the journey just as we are, because we are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever through our baptism. No matter where your journey takes you, keep some room in your heart for the unimaginable. You never know what priceless treasure you may discover as you ponder what calling God is calling you to do with this one wild and precious life. Amen.